Well, here we are at part three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I don't know, but here we are. Decals. So when we last left off, I had decided, I thought that I wasn't going to use these Su-24 decals because I didn't think they were going to look okay. I didn't, I didn't think they were going to go, but I really want to get this thing done. I'm so excited. And you know, I was thinking about it and, you know, maybe we don't want to try to perfectly mimic, you know, the, the scheme on the Su-57. And I figured that size-wise and everything, these, these decals really did work. So I used the Su-24 kit decals. I, it is a little wonky looking on the vertical stabilizers, but overall I used just the basic markings to, uh, to do this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use some of the kit stenciling. I did a test on one of the decals that I, you know, I knew that we weren't going to use. And of course, uh, you know, the age, d these decals don't age well, so it crumbled. So I'm going to give it a, a quick spray of uh, decal fix just so that we can use them. But of course that means we're going to have to, we're going to have to trim very specifically each decal out around the border of each one um, instead of just being able to cut generally because um, it's going to now cover the entire decal sheet in one solid, you know, um, film. But a little more labor intensive to, to use them, but I think it's going to be worth it. Um, so we'll have a little bit of the, the real world markings that, that Russians use. We'll have some of the, the mythical stencil, testers, sorry, stenciling. Um, but I think it's going to, it's all going to add up in a combo that's gonna make this look pretty good. And then once decaling's done, we can move on to uh, finishing up some detail painting and stuff and figure out, um, there's second weapons bay is there. For a minute I thought there's only one weapons bay, so uh, that door came off, but that door's still on. So we'll figure out weapons load, maybe like one air to ground, one air to air weapon or something, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. So what a difference some decals can make, huh? Um, this is looking pretty good now. I, I used the the kit decals. I followed some of the instructions I put somewhere I wanted them You know just for stenciling at first I wasn't sure how I was gonna like the red on top of the gray because you know I got the white numbers and everything but we did have the red outline over there and the the little Russian Symbol I forgot what that's called. I'll remember it later it was also in red from the Su-24 set so that worked um, and I think that it it actually came out looking pretty good I think that the stencils just really kind of, you know, bring stuff together. So everything already got a little dose of Microsol. I'm also going to hit it all with a little bit of Solvacet um, after I just make a, a few trims here and there. Um, the old decals, they were rough. They had a lot of thick carrier film on them, uh, some thick adhesive that, you know, was not working out very well. Um, but we made them work, and I'm, I'm glad that I, I gave the actual effort to making them work because I think this is starting to really come together as a really nice project. Um, I'm really happy with the way it's looking. I was, I was toying with putting the Russian Guards insignia on this plane, but it just, I think with what we have right now, it's, it's enough, it's enough. Uh, I don't want to overload it. So gonna do a little bit more work on the decals to get them all perfectly settled down and look really nicely painted. Um, and then there's not a lot of other detail painting to do on the aircraft itself. Uh, we've got to trim the uh, all the bay doors open and everything and uh, work on the insides there. I think we're going to do uh, an air to ground. We'll probably do the stealth bomb that the kit comes with for one of the bays. And then I'm going to figure out what kind of air to air actual Russian air to air ordinance will fit into the other bay. Not a lot. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know what's going to fit in there, but we'll try to fit something in there uh, on the little um, trapeze that comes with the kit and those weird weapons that it has. Um, I don't know what, I don't, not much is going to fit, but yeah, I, the, the stenciling really kind of brings everything to life. And to Tester's credit, you know, even in this small scale, uh, 148, you can, like, I don't know what, I don't read Cyrillic, I don't know what Russian says, but you can really read all of the lettering very clearly and everything on this, which is great. So, I'm going to, again, next step with the decals, and then I'm going to start looking at weapons options. With wheels mounted, but not glued on yet, it sits like an aircraft. Pretty cool, huh? There is a slight, like I was worried, 
slight disparity in the height of the wingtips. Um, not, I mean, it's not terrible. It's off by about one millimeter, or sorry, one sixteenth of an inch. Um, one side's just that much higher than the other. Oh well, really can't do much about it now, but it's it's looking pretty good, and the the decal work really helped. I still have that that one last layer of Solvacet to put on to make sure we get rid of any silvering or anything below them. And I still have to get rid of the winged archer, which I'll do. But I've been moving on to other aspects to uh, get get it sort of nearer towards finished. So unfortunately, weapons, okay, let, let's get there. Uh, nothing air-to-air -air wise is gonna fit in this weapons bay besides the AA-8 uh, aphid. Now, this is not a weapon that, you know, there's there's some mis great misunderstanding about what this weapon is actually for. Um, so if you if you know, great. If you don't know, it's a an incredibly short range uh, infrared air to air missile. When I was going through a lot of my training, we would we would often, you know, talk about this weapon and list its incredibly short range as one of its weaknesses. Because uh, when you're doing that, you know, Air Force-wise, you're learning about weapons and you're doing briefings, you always talk about their strengths and their weaknesses. But in reality, so, you know, if, if you've watched Top Gun and you've seen them repeatedly saying too close for missiles, I'm switching to guns, that is a real thing. There's there's a minimum range for every missile. It has to go a certain range away from the launch aircraft before it arms to prevent it from damaging the launch aircraft. Um, these are made specifically, the the Soviets invented them, um, to bridge that little bit of a gap between um, gun distance and the distance between other missiles. Uh, that's why they have such a short range. They're, they were never designed for like a, a longer range practical engagement. They are for a very close up self-defense use. Um, beyond that, they're basically useless. They're, they're, not a very good, they're not a very good missile. They're very small, they have a very small warhead. Um, they're like made to, uh, like I said, defend yourself very close up. Um, and there's a reason that the U.S. never made a very, this short range, this small close up missile. But anyway, unfortunately, from a practical standpoint, this is the only air to air weapon that, that fits in this bay. Nothing else is going to fit in there. That's it. So uh, anything larger than this just does not fit in that weapons bay. Which is the funny story behind why the uh, F-22 Raptor doesn't carry the AIM-9X. Uh, but, whatever. So this is their stylized version, and, you know, if you look, I, I think this was kind of what they based. They based their, this this stealth, quote-unquote, missile off of the AA-8. Um, but I decided, why not use the real-life AA-8 if we can, because a stealth air-to-air -air missile is ridiculous. Um, the truth is, you can't, most most air-to-air -air engagement radars are not tracking missiles anyway. Uh, we're going to leave this out for realism. We're going to give it a pair of AA-8s, of the aphids, that's going to sit on this um, this trapeze launcher in bay number one. Okay, And then we're going to use one of their stealth bombs that they made and put that in bay number two. And I think that will look cool. And if you want to think about it, you know, if we want to make up a, kind of a story behind this plane... Um, we can say that it carries the AA-8s because it uses its stealth, right? It, it's not supposed to engage in a long-range fight. It's designed to, to get in close with its one stealth nuclear bomb. Um, so it's it's not supposed to engage enemy fighters. But if it needs to do a pop-up self-defense, it has its little aphids. Um, you know, the F-117 carried no self-defense armament. So there you go. Um, but, but it's just whatever. It's just... Trying to come up with a good reason why it would carry those ridiculous things. Uh, but they fit perfectly snugly into that bay on that trapeze launcher. And those came from um, those came from the uh, an Edward MiG-21 set that I have lying around. So that's where we got those. So things are going along swimmingly right now. I'm going to get the, the, the bomb painted, the missiles a little bit more detailed, the trapeze launcher painted, and then work on the decals a little bit more. And then just a little bit more of a uh, little weathering on the outside 
to go with our pre-shading, um, I'm going to do some panel line outline, outlining with um, something like non null oil or a panel line wash a little bit. They're raised panel lines, so I'm just going to go over them just a little bit uh, to, to bring out a little bit of detail on them. And then I've got to separate these bay doors and give them the, you know, the Russians always have the red outline around their bay doors. So we'll do that. And, um, you know, then it'll be time for another good gloss coat to seal in those decals. And then I think I'm going to give it a semi-gloss overcoat. And once that's done, then we can do the final weathering on the plane. And, I mean, we're almost done. So I'm going to get to that. As we get closer to being finished, um, I've gotten a little bit of work. I, I tried to get the decal off, and so I ended up just having to paint over it. I, and then I, I masked over that and pulled up part of those decals, so I had to reapply some other ones. So work in progress. Got a little bit more to go on that, but it's going to be fine. Um, but all these doors are looking okay. We've got our aphids in there. Um, I decided to just use some, some of the gray decals from the kit on the, the stealth bomb to give it a little bit more something, you know. Um, but the doors are on there, all separated. Um, there's no good clear instruction for how these, these main geared bay doors are supposed to be. And I looked online and there's just also, people have them all the way practically touching the ground. They have them folded all the way up against the, um, the landing gear struts. So I just went sort of half and half with them. There, there's no pistons or anything to model in there, and I suppose I could have made some, but I just didn't. You know, so anyway, um, all of the assembly work, anything that's going to be added on to this is added on except for the, um, the, uh, the pistons for the air brakes, which I'll do after I get everything all finished with the weathering and the coating. But it's, it's looking, you know, it's like a plane now. Look at that. It's got, it's got stuff. Now, of course, you'll have to you'll have to turn the thing over to actually look at the missiles and whatever. But so be it. It's it's coming out really better than I better than I would have thought actually with the small size of these weapons bays um, and the the weapons themselves and everything. Um, I got to touch up the red on the bottom of these uh, weapons bay doors and the landing gear doors um, because I painted the red on the outside then cut them in half, but we'll do that real quick. And yeah. So getting closer, getting closer to being done. Um, I'm not gonna paint the wheels, the actual tires, until I've got everything else uh, semi-gloss coated um, because I, wanted, I, I just want the tires to be a different kind of finish on there. So just a few more, uh, few more steps. So we've got this really just about done. I, I'm just, I'm really excited to unmask uh, the infrared sensor and the canopy. All right, so at this point, uh, all I've done is just a little panel line wash in, I can't even call it panel line wash. Well, I did some panel line washes on some panel lines and in some recesses just to give it some shadows, um, just to help it out. It is semi-glossed. I used uh, Tester's uh, lacquer semi-gloss, which I think gives it a really nice finish. It almost looks like it's got some kind of like radar absorbent material, um, you know, ram coating on it. I got wheels finished, uh, I used NATO black to give it not just a standard black color, but you know, something a little bit special there. Um, you know, I just realized that the nose is still pretty glossy. I'm going to leave it though. <laughs> I still have, like I said, I'm going to do some heat weathering um, on that, but that's going to come later. Uh, my favorite part though is getting to unmask the canopy. So. Uh, we're gonna do that now when you're working with parafilm one of the easiest ways to uncover this and cleanest is just to gently use a toothpick and uh, you want to be firm but not rough to uncover and just go by the seams. Now, if you're having a lot of trouble, if you haven't used this before, you can take your your hobby knife and just uh, score the seams. You know the the border of, of where it meets up um, with the painted area. You usually don't have to do that, but uh, it can help sometimes. 
Uh, you just want to be careful not to scratch any of the painted areas because sometimes if you're too rough you can actually remove paint. So you want to be careful not to do that. But in general this usually comes off pretty easily. Right here, this is just some um, black pastel ground up on some 120 grit sandpaper. And I'm using this just to make some really realistic, nice looking exhaust. And to kind of color that ceramic area around the dark kind of permanent stains we made. Well, after uh, a few weeks of on and off work, this guy is finally done and I'm very happy with the results. So, the uh, last step was really to do this exhaust work and just make it look used, basically. You can see the panel line work came out really nice. Um, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy. It's not a perfect work. Uh, it's a rough kit to work with. Overall, it's, it's nice. Um, you know, I'm really happy with the improvements that went on with the cockpit. Kind of hard to see. Again, you know, my lighting and my angles here are not great. But um, you saw the cockpit, you know, in, in action, in, in progress as we went. Um, it, it's just uh, the improvements to the seat, um, the the photo etch that I was able to put in there, I think really make a difference. And you know, if you're close up, you can see it. It looks really, really good. Um, but everything else uh, just came out really, really nice. Um, I think that it's uh, a really nice new kind of look for an old kit. Uh, something different. Um, it's you know not a uh, not a plane that you see commonly out there, but I mean it just it came out really really good. I I'm really happy with the look of it. Uh, I'm not so happy with the old kit decals. Uh, they're just they're rough to work with. They're very thick. The carrier film um, they're not the best out there. But you know of course the uh, the aftermarket decals we used for this are really high quality. Came out really really nice. They definitely look very well painted on and everything. Um, and they help us represent, you know, in a really cool um, sort of uh, mixed real world slash fantasy subject, you know. Um, this is definitely a, a cool addition to a collection. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to offer this one up for sale uh, or keep it. Uh, you know, I haven't decided yet. Uh, we'll see how it goes. But it definitely is, um, it's a one-of-a-kind piece, which is what I like to do. Uh, no one else is going to have one of these, so uh, pretty happy. So thanks, everyone, for um, sticking with me throughout the creation of this. Um, love to hear your thoughts and opinions on everything that was done to, uh, to create this and bring this to life. Time to move on to the next project, and uh, I'll be throwing pictures of this probably on my Facebook page and on Instagram, um, just so I know the angles, you know, and again, angles and lighting here are not great, um, but definitely want to be able to show the pictures. Really like the uh, the way the semi-gloss um, gives the, the finish on this, so... All right. So yeah, once again, thanks for joining me for, for the whole work on this and everything. And uh, please join me again for the next project.